call the 18th regular meeting of the Common Council order. Would you please call the roll, City Clerk? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Rob? Here. Hamilton? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stepan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderbilt? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Groff? Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes of the previous council meeting be, um, and I would move that we, um, we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous common council minutes and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Second. There's a motion to second to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. I'd ask Alderman Deberg to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Next, we have public forum. Madam Clerk. All right. First on the list would be Tom Gessler. Tom, could you give us your home address, please? 1711 South 12th Street, Sheboygan. South 12th? Yes. Okay, and you will have five minutes, Tom. Okay, uh, I was reading through the agenda tonight and I see number two, in, uh, misinformation in the community. I wanted to make a couple comments on that. Uh, one of the big misunderstandings, I believe, has to do, being this time of year with uh, taxes coming up, has to do with the uh, wages and the salary of the city employees. Okay, I hear on the radio one time they have a call and show somebody's making $118,000 a year. Next time I hear on the show they're making 90. The next time I hear they're making 80. Okay, I don't have a problem with that, but I think it's a big misunderstanding. What I'm proposing is, uh, the Sheboygan Press could possibly uh, publish the wages and the salaries of the city employees, being that it is public record. Could uh, possibly publish that once a year or every other year. And then they could also put with that the requirements such as uh, you must have a master's degree for this particular job or the education that might be required because somebody might look and say, gee, this fellow is making $95,000 a year. Well, then they're going to have to show that uh, <coughs> perhaps they had six, eight years of college and that would be the reason why. Okay, the next, uh, the next thing I have a comment on is the uh, spaceport. I think that we should take a real hard look before we make this, okay, because uh, Right now we have several other projects in the community that I've talked to other people about, such as the marina, Blue Harbor, and a lot of the people are telling me they can't afford to sponsor this stuff anymore. It's getting quite costly. Uh, they're afraid the taxes this year were, were about even. Very good, I think you guys did a good job. But they're afraid in the, in the near future if we do some big project, such as this spaceport, that uh, taxes are gonna jump up uh, considerably. And a lot of people have uh, concern about this issue, including myself. Uh, I would say that we should really look into these big projects and maybe do some real good investigating because I really don't think the people can afford some of these projects right now. And uh, <clears throat> in closing, I'm just trying to say I'm not against development. I think that it's great that we have development in this city. As a matter of fact, I'd like to see maybe 10 or 12 industries come here to pay a respectable wage, $15, $20 an hour. I think it would, it would be great. I'm for development all the way. But I'm just asking that you really consider when you do these larger projects, keep the taxpayer in mind and look at the long term, 20, 25 years down the road, what could happen. Thank you. 
Thank you, Tom. Next on the list is Lee Montemayor. <clears throat> Lee, could you give us your home address, please? 1015 Logan, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you'll have five minutes. Thank you, Madam Ch City Clerk Richards, Mayor, and the Council for allowing me this time to express my concerns. Tonight I bring up the subject of electrical shock weapons, which I think may be a liability to our city due to the lack of medical studies on these weapons. The testing of a single pig and five dogs before being issued to law enforcement departments is flawed. The studies do not include the immediate and future effects on humans. These studies are now being conducted by law enforcement and are leaving a trail of dead and injured humans that seems to be, have been used <clears throat> as guinea pigs. As a result of this, there are numerous lawsuits against the manufacturer due to the lack of information and about its non-lethal weapons claim. The first of many trials against this product is currently in progress. Various city and police departments are also in the process of the lawsuits for wrongful death claims. Millions of dollars have already been awarded in wrongful death, inhumane, and excessive force complaints. The use of these weapons on humans is highly questionable to say the least. And all of dead humans do not talk. Because the company no longer can claim that the weapon is non-lethal, many police departments have now stopped or suspended the use of these weapons. I ask this council to please not use these weapons until you have made rules on its usage. My first suggestion would be not to require our police officers to be electrocuted in order to carry this weapon. The manufacturer of this weapon requires a signed waiver stating that the individual will not bring a legal action against this product or the manufacturer before volunteering. I do not want my police officers to be subjected, subjected to this sadistic and inhumane torture just to be authorized to carry this weapon. We don't require officers to get shot by a bullet in order to carry a gun, and this weapon is just as deadly. The restriction on the deployment of this weapon should be one step above the use of a firearm, and then, and only then, perhaps tightly regulating rules would save lives and legal action against our city and law enforcement officers which at this time we could ill afford. All a person, this gun is what causes possible death. <coughs> this little device here is an implanted defibrillator that saves lives. The gun causes possible sudden death fibrillation by an electrical shock and the internal defibrillator electrically shocks the heart back to a normal heart rhythm. If we could implant this device into everyone, then we could solve the problem of sudden death caused by an electrical stun gun. But this is neither probable or feasible. The gun cost is $800. This is $25,000 and doesn't include the medical cost to implant the device. As you can see, it's a lot less to kill a human than to save a human's life. Life is precious. And I ask that you take every precaution you have in your power to prevent possible death. In our country, all citizens are innocent until proven guilty. And not restricting the use of this weapon makes the user, judge, jury, and executioner by just pulling the trigger on this torture weapon. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Next on the list is Jeff Shuko. Jeff, could you give us your home address, please? Yes, my address is 2303 South 17th Street. <coughs> and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, the subject I'd like to discuss tonight is uh, in regards to the Wisconsin Aerospace Science Complex and Spaceport. And the topic in particular is utilization of mass transit for visitors coming from out of town. 
This service might be utilized by using existing mall parking lots just off the interstate exits coming into Sheboygan. The malls will draw additional business to their stores. Mass transit usage by visitors will alleviate traffic and parking congestion in downtown and lakefront areas. Also, our former Sheboygal invasion problem area west of the south side Piggly Wiggly could possibly be utilized for parking. I then uh, made some cost time analysis revenue generating uh, rough estimates that will just help give us an idea as to what sort of uh, help this might be in revenue generation for our community here. Uh, low end estimate for weekends based on 52 day weekends a year uh, times 500 visitors a day equals 50,000 visitors a year in that 52 day weekend period. The high end estimate of those weekends based on two 50 day weekends a year uh, by 1,500 visitors a day would equal 150,000 visitors a year. C, three months of summer weekdays equals 60 weekdays during the summer months. 500 visitors a day times 60 weekdays equals 30,000 visitors a year. D, nine months of fall, winter, and spring weekdays times 250 visitors a day equals 45,000 visitors a day. Now I broke this down a little bit for everyone because obviously as the seasons change, we could expect that the attendance at a facility such as this would vary also accordingly. Now low and the next step would be obviously to tally up these totals on a low end and high end basis. Low end yearly uh, visitor estimate totals a plus C plus D equals 125,000 visitors a year. Now I based a, based a fee on uh, our current charges for mass transit utilization in this, in this uh, study, uh, which would be uh, shuttle service provided $3 charge to a shuttle service uh, times 125,000 visitors a year would equal revenue of $375,000 a year that would come directly from mass transit. The high end yearly visitor estimate totals B plus C plus D, which equals 225,000 visitors a year. A $3 charge for a two-way shuttle service times 225,000 visitors a year equals $675,000 a year in revenue. Uh, presently, Mass Transit operates at a loss, costing taxpayers approximately $600,000 a year. So we might even be able to see mass transit turn into a profitable entity for our community. Uh, this came to mind when I uh, read an article about uh, concerns in the press. And I looked at a lot of these other concerns also. Uh, this was an article named, uh, titled Sheboygan's Future in Space, dated 12-11-05. And I've looked at these and I'd be happy to address them in the future. And I've already done some studies on the uh, Sheboygan County Airport and the requirements that might be incurred uh, by that for the civilian aerospace program, the support uh, uh, missions that would be required uh, for the satellite launching and sh future shuttle launches out in Lake Michigan, which by the way, in regards to some of these problems, I've been informed that 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 uh, platform might resemble a giant oil rig, which would be uh, quite possibly a couple miles offshore. So a lot of noise issues and a lot of issues that have been raised in that article uh, may not really be an issue at all. And I would just encourage the media and the citizens to keep an open mind towards this because I, I view this as possibly one of the greatest revenue enhancing opportunities that we've ever seen here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Next on the list is John Berner. John, can you give us your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. And you will have five minutes. Okay, good evening, Mayor, Council Members. I listened to Mrs. Montenmeyer, and I was going to speak of something else, but I'd like to comment on what he has talked about. How many people in this common council ever had to subdue somebody? Somebody that was really quacko, kind of. Not just a drunk, but somebody overpowering other than you have. 
Mr. Mott. Yes, sir, I have. Not easy all, task. All through high school, that was my job. No, not just high school. We're not talking about kids anymore. We're talking people big. People on drugs. Mr. Berner, please alcohol. address the council. You're here to address oh, the sorry. council. I'm sorry. People that are on drugs, people are on alcohol. It's not an easy task. You talk about it as a lethal weapon. People in the martial arts, their hands are lethal weapons. Boxers, hands, lethal weapons. A pen is a lethal weapon used in the wrong way. There is just about everything that a police officer carries can be considered a lethal weapon. Lawsuits have been brought against police for the use of batons, handcuffs, uh, you name it. When you're some, it's a last resort. And what as a last resort you want to use is a bullet or something hopefully will not harm the man or woman physically. There is nothing certain in this life except death. To say something is bug free, you can't. I think instead of taking out a revolver, a nine millimeter, this other weapon, as you want to call it, I would consider that to be the best method because they're not going to use it unless they absolutely have to. They're going to treat it as any other kind of firearm. And if you don't think the police are going to do it that way, I, then you don't have much faith in, faith in the police department. I think it is a better option than to have nine millimeter rounds flying around with some somebody that's just gone a little out of proportion. I mean, they just did it in Milwaukee in the courthouse. They used the sun gun twice on the person, got them into an ambulance, into a hospital right away. Now, if they would have had to take out a pistol, you know, it was up in a courthouse. I mean, how many people are in a courthouse? Uh, police don't get to pick the grounds they work on. It uh, just comes when it comes. And another thing I, I was thinking about and bothered me from the la from common council meetings back is when people saying, well, we can cut the overtime and the police don't have to issue as many tickets. And another thing was the city is not a collection agency for fines. Well, that's probably why there's so many fines owed the city. Somebody has to collect them. And I don't think the police like working all this overtime. I wouldn't. I mean, that's a very small area in a vehicle to be, to be spending how many hour after hours with just your communications. And, and then if you go out and get a coffee and a donut, you get, hey, he's getting his donut. <laughs> no, I, I don't think they like the overtime neither. I know when we're working, yes, we're happy to help people out with the overtime, but after a while, hey, no, I didn't care for it. It takes away from your, your, your family. And the stress, I'm certain the stress on the police officers being combined with what they do. And uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you, John. And last on the list is Don Cook. Don, could we have your home address, please? 923 Dillingham Avenue. Dillingham? Yes. And you'll have five minutes. I would like to thank Mayor Perez and the members of the Common Council for this opportunity to speak. I would like to take this time to talk about the safety of our police officers and the general public. We all go to work every day expecting to return home uninjured. We expect to work in a safe environment and be given the tools to be able to work safely. We should be treating the police department in the same manner. Through November of this year, the police department has had 32 deputy duty incurred injuries due to struggles with uncooperative citizens. Six of those injuries were severe enough to result in medical attention other than first aid at a cost to the city of over $6,000. 
In recent past years, there were three very serious injuries that might have been prevented if the officers had the tasers. One had serious knee damage, one had a brain injury, and one had a shoulder injury. The medical cost for these three injuries alone is now over $105,000. This cost is still climbing because two of the three injured officers are still receiving medical treatment for their injuries. Through November of this year, the police department has logged 50 lost time days due to injuries caused from struggles with uncooperative citizens at a cost of about $10,000. With these rates, one third of all officers can expect to be injured on the job every year at a large cost to the city. Tasers are a tool police officers can use to subdue the uncooperative citizens safely and quickly. According to statistics released by the Cincinnati Police Department, tasers have helped decrease police officer injuries by 56% and suspect injuries by 35%. Spending the money on tasers, whether from the budget or from donations, is a small price to pay to help guarantee the safety of our police officers, the innocent bystanders, and the uncooperative citizens they are trying to control. I commend the older persons who voted keep, to keep the tasers in the budget and accept the anonymous donations to fund them. Our police officers should have the same right to go home at the end of a shift, uninjured, as you and I do. Thank you. Thank you, John. <coughs> Good. That's it. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is one of the things that a mayor gets to do that I most definitely find great pleasure in doing, and yet at the same time find great sadness. Pleasure because we get to recognize an individual who has demonstrated over and over again his commitment and devotion to our community. Sadness because he has decided to retire, so he will no longer be a part of our staff, although I think he won't be leaving us for too long. He might be around. I am speaking of Chief Zire, and I'd ask that he please step forward. I'd like to recognize you, sir. <coughs> Chief Zire began working with the uh, Sheboygan Fire Department in 1972, I believe. And that's an interesting date for me because that's when I graduated from high school. So <laughs> I decided to go to college then. So I can remember that from now on. But Chief Zyra has worked himself up the ranks. He became a, a chief of a fire chief. He has done a remarkable, outstanding job. He has distinguished himself both as a professional, an advocate for his department, an advocate for the community. We will certainly miss you and the great job that you've done, although I know that you've left behind a, a great legacy and a great man to follow your footsteps. Chief Zyra and I have not always agreed. This morning was one instance. <laughs> but he has always been a respectful man, very courteous, very decent, and very professional. And although we don't agree at all times, and at times we do, I still have great respect and admiration for you. Chief Zyra, for the faithful and dedicated service to the Sheboygan Fire Department of the City of Sheboygan, I hereby recognize you. Thank you, you're very kind. Honorable Mayor Perez, Madam Clerk, City Attorney McLean, members of this Common Council, members of many, many previous Common Councils that I've worked for, and the citizens of Sheboygan who I have proudly served, uh, who I've been able to proudly serve, and who have given me a lot of support over my years in the department. I served this department as a firefighter for 12 years, for, as an officer for 16 years and as your fire chief for the last five years. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work for one of the best cities in the state of Wisconsin. We owe that 
to you, the council, to previous councils, to give all of us the tools to make this city that great city that's been written about, safest city, best city to live. It also is a reason for, our, the reason we got that is from our city employees. All the city employees work hard to make this city a great city. And I also want the citizens to know that in my five years as being a department head, I have worked with excellent department heads who always think in the best interests of the city, who try and spend the money in the right way and do the right thing. We aren't always perfect, but we worked as a team to make this city what it is, as our predecessors also did. So to all city employees, I thank you for your cooperation with my department. To my department, who I'm very, very proud of, who give it all to the citizens of the city, day in and day out, I thank you for your support of me and the staff to make this department one of the best in the state. I'd also like the citizens to know that yes, I'm leaving, but there's a good man coming to take my place. And you can be assured that he will give his best to make sure the city of Sheboygan is a very safe place to live. Thank you, I'm honored, and I'll miss you, but I'm gonna stay in Sheboygan. <laughs> Next item on the agenda will be the mayor's comments. There are three things I'd like to briefly touch on, and then if there's any alderman that would like to uh, perhaps discuss these issues a little, a couple of issues further, I'd be glad to talk to you about them. Uh, one is the citizens' budget survey that we're conducting right now, and one is refers to misinformation in the community. The citizens' budget survey is a, an ongoing thing right now. People have the opportunity to respond to the concerns that were raised during the uh, 16 listening sessions. The deadline for the survey uh, to, to, that you're allowed to, to complete is December 31st, so there's still some time left if there's anyone that would like to respond. The survey itself has generated uh, some controversy. Uh, more so because uh, a couple of things that I can recall that have, have stood up more than anything else. One being that perhaps there should have been um, some staff involvement in the construction of the questions. There's reasons why there wasn't any staff involvement in construction. But if I offended any of my department heads for not including you, I apologize to you. We all learn as we move along. I've only been a mayor eight months. I'm doing the best I possibly can, putting 10, 12 hours a day, working hard, just keeping my eyes focused on what we needs to be done, trying to regroup, restructure, rebuild, and that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not out to get anyone. I'm not out to offend anyone. I'm not out to tarnish anyone's reputation. I'm not out to get any department head or any department in general. I just want to do a good job. And that was the whole basis for doing this survey. The survey will have value, and I think it will have tremendous value to me as I put together the next budget. We've heard, and we all know, that next year is not going to be an easy year fiscally. We're going to have some tough times again. And when there's tough times, tough times can get a little disruptive for government, disruptive for departments and so forth. I ask to be patient with me. I ask department heads to be patient with me. I'm going to do my job as fairly and equitable as I possibly can. I've said many, many times, I will not pick favorites. I cannot pick favorites. I don't run one department. I have to run the entire city. And I have to be very careful that I don't start picking favorites because that's not fair to the ones that aren't the favorites. So again, the citizen budget survey is ongoing. December 31st is the deadline. You can still pick up forms in my office. You can fill it out online. That's being done to, uh, as we speak. And I hope that all citizens and anyone else uh, from the city uh, departments will participate and give me their input 
with respect to the questions that we're asking. <coughs> next, that, the next item would be the misinformation in the community. Sheboygan is a great city. We have <coughs> lots of great people. In particular, we have lots of great people who care about our government, and they've gotten involved in our government, more than ever, I think. When I was an alderman, one of my dreams was to really bring city government to the spotlight. I wanted people to see what we're doing. I wanted people to see how we spend our money. I wanted people to see how we conduct ourselves, how we conduct business. I wanted people to see how great we were. I wanted people to see how concerned we were about them and their lives and their jobs and livelihoods and how our power as a council impacts their lives, whether we want to or not. Every time we vote, we impact somebody's life in some way, minor or large. We do it every time we meet as a committee, as a council. I know you know that. I don't have to say that. But I say that because we can never forget the power that this council has over our community and that the vote that you make or cast does not impact just your district, but the entire community when it's taken collectively. So collectively, this council has a lot of power. The misinformation comes in when votes go one way or go the other way, when a survey is constructed in such a way that perhaps somebody didn't like. And there's information that comes out in chat lines, sometimes radio, sometimes out in the streets, sometimes in our own departments, and people have a tendency to express themselves. And I will never deny anyone the opportunity to do that. That's what this whole country is about, our freedom to be able to express ourselves any way we'd like without having to be fearful of that. But I ask that if you have a doubt that there's information out there that's not true, please call the office, please call your alderman and talk to them, ask them, is this true? Mr. Gessler made a, a, a comment earlier about how every time you hear about who is making how much money, it changes. There shouldn't, there shouldn't be a reason for that to happen. It shouldn't happen in radio, it shouldn't happen in the paper, it shouldn't happen in our hallways, it shouldn't happen in our city departments, it shouldn't happen at all. Yet it does, and we have to live with that because we're only human beings, but I ask, that if you don't know, please find out. We're not going to withhold any information from anyone. We are a public records institution. Everything is done up on top, and if it's not, you come talk to me. We're going to make sure it is. Find out. Take it upon yourself to find out what is true, because there can be a lot of rumor, a lot of gossip, a lot of innuendo, a lot of entertainment. Some people just have fun with it. But if it's not true, it can be damaging to our community. It can be damaging to this effort to unite this council, to unite this community. It can hurt us. So I ask, please take it upon yourselves to find out what is true. And if it's true, we deal with it. If it's not, then we have to correct it. We have a duty and an obligation to our community and to ourselves to make sure that when we talk about things, they're true. Having said that, it's a time to reflect what we've done in the past. We're going into a new year. Christmas is coming. Great times ahead. I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a lot to be very grateful for in having to work with a council that I, that I have now. Again, as I said earlier, we may not always agree, but that's OK. That's OK. We move on, and life goes on, and we have to conduct business nonetheless and make the best decisions possible for our community. That's all we're here for. I want to wish everyone, and I hope I don't get in trouble, folks, a very, very Merry Christmas, because lately you can't say that, but that's the way my parents taught me. Until someone can t teach me otherwise, I will do what my parents taught me. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to every one of you. Thank you. <coughs> we, don't, we don't have a hearing, do we? We have three hearings. We have one hearing? Three. Oh, three hearings.
Okay, we have three hearings. Number one, to amend the city of Sheboygan official zoning ordinance so as to increase the permit fee for a driveway permit from $25 to $35. Second hearing, to repeal and recreate the city of Sheboygan's floodplain zoning ordinance be an Appendix A to the Sheboygan <coughs> Municipal Code. The third hearing for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of the unpaved east-west alley between High Avenue and Swift Avenue. Is there anyone that would like to address the council on any one of those uh, hearings? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? And I need to say it one more time. Is there anyone that would like to address the council on any of those three hearings? There would be a nod. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the hearings be closed. There's a motion and a second to close hearings. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. <clears throat> Consent agenda, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, item 18.1 through 18.13, I would move that all RSOs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass all mm -hmm. resolutions. Matt, we'd like to have 18.3 be referred back to PPI. So it'll be 18.1 to 18.13 with the exception of 18.3. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like item 18.6 uh, referred back to finance so we can obtain a legal opinion before we vote on this. 18.6 will be referred back to finance. Anything else, Alderman? There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Racky, Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1814 through 1816, except 1815, will be referred back to public work, except. 1815 will be referred to public protection and safety and public works. Reports of officers to 1817 by City Plan Commission recommending amending the text of the zoning ordinance so as to increase the permit fee for a driveway permit from $25 to $35. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the report of officer and pass the ordinance. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with the increase of these fees that are taking place, could you please tell me, is this money going back into the, gen uh, this money going into the general fund or where would this extra $10, does it go to, where is it going? The, these fees, per, uh, permit fees go to the general fund, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Scroff, Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Radke, Sigali, Stefan, Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Bauman, Aye. and Deber. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 1818 lies over. 1819 through 1822 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1823 by Alderman Susha requesting the Sheboygan County Board and or the appropriate county board committee to consider lowering the speed limit on County Highway OK from Wheaton Creek Road to 500 feet south of Riverdale Avenue from 45 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, <clears throat> Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just would like to inform the public that we had that speed limit um, from 55 down, put down to 45, and at the time that we had done this, and this was even before I became older person, we were fighting because I lived in that area concerning all the accidents and that, and fighting to have something done in Weedon Creek and okay. And um, the county at that time refused to bring it down to 35. They said they were willing to do the 45, 
but they did not want to do the 35. So I'm hoping that um, this resolution will help, but at that time it, it, they wouldn't do it. So as long as you're aware of that. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Segali. And I will add under discussion that I plan to have some discussions with the county officials about that to see if we can once and for all deal with this issue to the safety of the community. Thank you. Any other comments, discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg and Eberg, aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1824 to 1828 lies over. 1829 to 1831 to be referred. Report of Committee 6 by law and license. 1832 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab drivers license number 6959 based on failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of the committee, I move that we accept and adopt the report of the committee. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. I do need to ask if Charles Burns is here. Is Charles Burns here? Is Charles Burns here? Your Honor, he is not here. Thank you, Alderman Manning. Is there any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1833 to be referred. Reported committees. 8, 1834, by finance, recommending authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> 1834, um, which is the RC um, and resolution for um, a transfer of appropriations for the police department donation from uh, contributions to Taser guns in the amount of $2,000. That, um, that RC and 1835 also through 40, I would move that all RCs be accepted and, uh, and adopted and that all the resolutions be put upon their passage. And I'll go through them if you'd like. 1835 is, um, is a transfer of funds from um, TID 8 through TID, uh, from TID 8 debt service fund to through two TID 8 construction fund in the amount of $29,550. 1836 is a transfer of, of revenue and appropriations for transit paratransit vehicles uh, going uh, from the transit utility fund federal grant subsidy to the paratransit vehicles in the amount of $144,000. And then also a, a transfer uh, from the motor vehicle fund interfund transfer to the paratransit vehicle fund in the amount of $36,000. 1837 <clears throat> is a transfer uh, estimated revenue and appropriations for donations received for the sculpture purchase in the amount of $21,15. Uh, an estimated revenue and appropriation for fundraising fund proceeds by the International Committee in the amount of $298,29. Um, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for remediation expenses from River Park Place in the amount of $10,000. 1838 is a, is establishing the revenue and appropriations for environmental TID professional services uh, in the amount of 1839 is uh, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for Mead Library self-check system from Everhart Fur Trust Funds in the amount of $71,686. And then <clears throat> 1840 is establishing the appropriations for um, the non-represented salary, Social Security, and Wisconsin retirement benefit increases. Um, 
and I don't have the total amount on that, but um, it's for the various departments uh, coming out of salary contingency account to the various salary accounts. Thank you. Thank you, Alwyn Graf. And a second. Thank you for being patient, Alwyn Berg. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? 16 ayes. Motion carries. 18 ordinances introduced, 10. 1841 lies over. 1842 to be referred. Matters laid over, 11. 1637, an RO, number 4210506, by the City Plan Commission relating to vacating the unpaved east west alley between High mm -hmm. Avenue and Swift Avenue. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the report of officer be accepted and filed and the ordinance be passed. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deber. Aye. Eberg, Serta, Davis, aye. and Graf. <clears throat> Excuse me, 16 ayes. Motion carries. 17-4 matters laid over. RO number 440-506 by the City Plan Commission repealing and recreating the City of Sheboygan's floodplain zoning ordinance being Appendix A to the municipal to the Sheboygan Municipal Code. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the report of officer be accepted and filed and the ordinance be passed. Second. Motion and a second, under discussion. <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? <clears throat> Sigali? Could you just please explain again what I'm voting on? I'm sorry. Um, RO number 4440506 by the City Plan Commission repealing and recreating the City of Sheboygan's floodplain zoning ordinance being Appendix A to the Municip Sheboygan Municipal Code. Okay. Um, Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. And Kittleson. <laughs> 16 ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over, 1727, RO number 4490506, by the Civil Service Commission reestablishing the salary for the position of older person of the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Eberg. Uh, thank you. I uh, would move that the report of officer be uh, accepted and filed and that the general ordinance number 680506 be placed upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this relates to the alderman's salaries for the year of 2007 and 2008. The current salary level of 4668 was established in 2003 and has stayed at that particular level until the current time and will remain that at that level throughout 2006. The 2007 and 2008 uh, increase is approximately 1.5%, which is consistent with uh, the money that we had budgeted in the last uh, year for salary raises for staff. Uh, this came out of the Civil Service Commission. I see Ms. Hackbarth and uh, also Mr. Surick are, are, are uh, present if uh, there is questions, if there are questions that relate to how they arrived at this figure. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was unable to attend the civil service meeting. I really had wanted to um, discuss this issue with those folks. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the extremes that the city goes to when it comes to salaries. Um, I know the last couple of meetings I've gotten up and I've spoken about some of the positions receiving uh, guaranteed 25% pay increase over a three year period of time uh, when they're promoted. And I don't really agree with a 25% uh, pay increase over a period of time. I do agree that if somebody is promoted, they do deserve uh, a one-time pay increase, but then it should not drag into the second year and the third year. Um, 
But on the other extreme, when you look at uh, the way we're treating some of our new, newly hired employees, we promise them a pay increase if they successfully complete the probationary period. And after that, we told them they'd get a pay increase. And what's been happening is uh, they, they make it through that, and we give them a 0% increase. So my question is, what type of incentive are we giving to these employees, these new people? If you tell them you're going to give them a raise, and they do what they're supposed to do, they deserve some type of a raise, even if it's the 1.5% at the end of the six-month period. Um, another extreme is when you uh, look at what the library, library board did last week when they um, gave the library director a five-year unprecedented contract paying a minimum of over $94,000 a year and put provisions in there that virtually make it impossible to uh, relieve that person of their duties um, without paying them the full $500,000 uh, worth of the contract. You compare that to the other extreme where the aldermanic pay right now is at $89 a week. I'll say that again. The aldermen are paid $89 a week. Um, there are a few facts um, that I think we need to lay on the table. First of all, the proposed increase uh, for the aldermen from the Civil Service Commission would take effect in 2007. In all likelihood, um, all of the aldermen that are in this room right now probably won't be in office in 2007. So there's no guarantee that any of us are going to benefit from this pay increase. Um, as it was stated, the aldermanic pay has been frozen since 2003. The proposed increase from the Civil Service Commission would increase the aldermanic pay by $1.35 a week in 2007. This is after four years of no pay increase, and then in 2007, we'd get an extra $1.35 per week. And the last, well, one of the second last point is that you have to remember that this year, minimum wage was increased from $5.15 an hour to $5.70 an hour. Uh, the last fact is that the minimum wage that is paid to the aldermen is not the cause of the financial problems of the city. Now, I believe that right now I'm the only elder person who currently lives at home with my children and chooses the profession of a full-time mother. If I choose to go back to the workforce in the private sector, as I did for 16 years, I could easily earn more than the highest paid city official. I'm not making this motion to line my own pockets. This motion is strictly to reflect the increase in the aldermanic pay so they are not earning less than minimum wage. Therefore, I amend this document to make the annual salary for aldermen in 2007 $5,154 a year instead of the $4,738. And then in 2008, the pay would be $5,231, which would reflect the 5.1% increase. Is there a second to that motion to amend? There's a second. Excuse me, who seconded it? Alderman Montemayor. Thank you. Is there any discussion on just the amendment? And the amendment being, Madam Clerk, please. The amendment is to, correct me if I'm wrong, Alderman Susha, for 2007, the alderman's salary would be 5154 per year, mm -hmm. and in 2008, it would be 5231 per year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Okay, I had some lights blinking on the previous motion. Is there anybody that would like to talk on the amendment? Alderman Sigali, you were next on the other motion. Do you want to talk <coughs> on the amendment? No, I'm the other okay, Alderman Vanderweel, you were next on the first motion. Do you want to talk on the amendment? Okay, Alderman Ratke, do you want to talk on the amendment? Then you're up, Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Attorney McQueen, um, if I heard Alderman Persa Susha correctly, this is directly to this. If we amend this to $5,154 per year, none of us sitting here right now is guaranteed we're going to see any of that money, correct? So we talked about misinformation before, Your Honor, and just to make the clarification, as I heard you state when this first came to the council, this would not take effect till after the 2007 election, which in essence means that not one of us sitting here is entitled to any of this money unless we are reelected. That's right, Alderman Radke. There's a statute that says an alderman can't <coughs> increase their their salaries uh, while they're in office for their their term. That's why you see that the uh, salary for 2006 is 
set at the same salary it is for 2005. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Any more discussion on just the amendment? We will call a roll on just the amendment. Um, let's see. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. Stefan. No. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. No. Bowman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. No. Groff. No. Kittleson. No. And Manny. No. Four ayes and 12 noes. Motion fails. On the original motion as presented by the Civil Service Commission, Alderman Sigali, under discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess when it comes to increasing of Alderman's salary, I didn't go into this with the thought of uh, increases of salary or, or how much we were being paid. I went into this to help the people in my district, in this community. Um, the money, it, it was nice to have, and it's nice to have, but to try to to give us increases, I, I think we all knew what we were coming into when we took this job and we were, re we, we were elected. And I, I will vote no against anything that comes for raises for the alderman. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vanderhoel. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to explain myself a little bit. My constituents have asked me to control salaries within the city. So I voted against raises for sal salaried workers in the past, including the mayor's salary, which was last year. And uh, today I will vote against the increase in the alderman's salary because in 2007 times will still be tight. The first place we should be tightening our belts is in the salaries of the department heads and the elected officials. In no way does my vote imply that any of these people, including the alderman in 2007, don't deserve a raise. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do. Uh, agree with Alderman Shusha on her analysis on the pay for the aldermen, but I do believe that our city is in very, very <coughs> financial restraints right now, and I think we should have a freeze on any kind of wage increases for all people in all departments of the city. And I wish I could support a raise, but at this point, I can't. Alderman Shusha, second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, for the record, aldermen do not have to be paid minimum wage. I just thought it would be equitable if older people were paid minimum wage. Um, but I, I, I do agree, and I look forward to Alderperson's Meyer resolution freezing all wages. Um, I think that the aldermen have set the example for years already of frozen wages. It's just for all of you that are going to vote no to the $1.35 increase per week for the aldermen in 2007, I think you need to look real hard at the way you've been saying yes to the raises to the other people in the city. It's one thing to stand up and say, I won't give anyone else a pay increase, or we have to do something, but then you continue to vote to increase, increase, increase. And I understand that some of the increases are in the, in the municipal code that way. But um, as far as the extra $1.35 a week, that probably isn't going to do a whole lot. Um, I mentioned $89 a week is what aldermen are currently being paid. Um, as far as the expenses associated with an older person, I would say $89 barely covers my expenses for the week. So I'm not here to make money, but I'm not here to lose money. I'll put my time in at a 0%, $0 per hour, but I do expect the expenses to be covered. So um, I think the $1.35 a week is rather insulting, so therefore I, I might as well vote no. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to clarify, as far as those older persons who do vote for pay increases for other staff members, I think it's important that people keep in mind that we are not in full control of setting those wages. We work with unions. We can't just come in and say freeze because we can push things into arbitration and lose full control. Um, as far as my, the, our own salaries, I think it's important to start with ourselves first. And I think it's more of an issue of principle at this time. How can we expect to give ourselves a pay increase when we're telling the citizens that we really need to be holding the line in, as far as spending? Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. And this would be just on the ordinance that was presented by the Civil Service Commission. Which, if you vote for it, 
there's a raise. If you vote no, there's none, okay? Please call the roll. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Kittleson? No. Manny? You vote yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Meyer. One eye, 15 no's. Motion fails. 17, 13. Attorney McLean. Just, just for clarification, counsel, uh, you defeated this ordinance. Where that stands is currently there is no provision for any wages for aldermen in 2006, 2007, or 2008. If your intent is to keep it at 4668, uh, there should be a document coming in at the next meeting to do that if that's your intent. Otherwise, um, you're not. You're going to get zero. <laughs> and maybe that's what you want to do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take your work for free. How's that? Is that it? Thank you, Attorney McLean. 1736 under matters laid over, resolution number 1990506 by Alderman Groff, Meyer, and Van Akron authorizing the city to enter into a contract for obtaining medical stop loss insurance. <coughs> Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 1843 to be referred to Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners. 1844, refer to Public Protection and Safety. 1845, refer to City Plan Commission. 1846, a resolution by Alderman Manny authorizing enter into the, an agreement between the City of Sheboygan and the Village of Kohler for the operation of a joint municipal court. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. <clears throat> behalf of Law and Licensing, I, um, I believe we have to suspend the rules to deal with yes, this tonight. Yes, yes. So Alderman. I so move to suspend the rules. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules. We need a two-thirds vote. Any this, uh, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please continue. Thank you. Uh, so that we can move ahead in our relationship with Kohler, we need to pass the resolution. This will put together a joint municipal court, uh, pursue uh, efficiency and save costs. So certainly it is in the best interest of the city. We need this done immediately so that the new relationship can be established as of January 1st, 2006. I need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. So I so move to put the resolution upon its passage. Motion and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion on 1846? <coughs> there being none, please call the roll. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman, Aye. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, no. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Radke. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1847, an ordinance by Alderman Manny repealing and recreating Division 3 of Article 4 of Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code so as to create and establish a joint municipal court for the city of Sheboygan and the village of Kohler. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is the companion legislation. I move the, the ordinance uh, passage. I need suspension of rules. I need suspension. Oh, we haven't suspended yep. this yet. Yeah, it's moved to suspend the rules. A motion, a second to suspend. Thank you. Any discussion? Discussion? Okay. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Suspension is allowed. Please proceed with a passage. Companion order. legislation, so I so move its passage. There's a motion to pass the ordinance under discussion. There being on, please call the roll. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. No. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. 
Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Sagali? Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? 1848 is a communication from Michael Warner regarding his concerns with the level of conduct of an elected official of the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Manny. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in relationship to this communication, I would move to file. Second. There's a motion and a second to file under discussion. Please call the roll. Uh, let's see here. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. Please proceed, City Attorney. 1849 is an ordinance relating to prohibited parking and time zones to add bus only parking Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. to various locations. That will be, it will lies over. 1850 is a resolution authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Bruce Valland versus Nathan Wright et al. and authorizing payment for said services. And that will go to risk management. Okay, there's uh, Alderman Berg, you asked for a couple of minutes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I just <clears throat> heard something on the TV last night and I thought, <clears throat> this is the end of a, a year now, next month we start a brand new year. I thought maybe this would be a good New Year's resolution for the City Council and the Mayor. What we should do is rid ourselves of negative energy and replace it with positive ideas because this will benefit the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Here, here. There's motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>